Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 751. I'm Kevin Coulson, and I'm here with Susie Leaf from Anglican Futures, and we're going to talk about the last day of Lambeth. All right, welcome to another show of Anglican Unscripted. Now, a, a lot of you are new here. Our audience has grown 20% over the last week. Great. If you have not subscribed yet, now is a great chance to click that little uh, red rectangle subscribe button. Boom, you're subscribed. But you're not done yet. A little bell appeared. Click that little bell and you will get instant notifications every time there's a new episode of Anglican Unscripted or any of the interviews we do on Anglican TV. Now we're going to get to the end of Lambeth. The last Lambeth. Well, maybe, maybe not. But uh, we do need to talk about it. And I want to go here real quick. I have it somewhere on my phone. Go to Facebook. I'm going to type in Lee Gettis. Posted this an hour ago. Lee Gettis said, apparently, Archbishop Justin Welby has said he believes the most that most Anglicans in England now recognize the Pope as the father of the church in the West. For the, it's true. Avo- for the avoidance of any doubt, this is Legatus, I do not believe that is true, and he is not. But yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what, what yeah. else could Justin say to make this uh, the, the most memorable Lambeth uh, in ever? Well, I mean, it, it just comes back down to his whole his whole passion that we create visible unity, even if there's functional diversity. It, he's called that a, a pearl. Of, not he hasn't called it a pearl of great price. He's called it a prize that's that's worth almost anything to achieve: visible unity um, with functional diversity. And I think he thought that he could kind of bring Rome and um, the Church of England and the Orthodox all together. Uh, because if we just name the name of Jesus, that's enough. Um, I mean, back in summer camp, we would gather around the fire and sing Kumbaya. That didn't work. And I, I don't think the, the work here of Justin Welby, you, can wish, you can't wish this into existence. You have to have framework, uh, parameters, and Anglicanism, Anglicanism, up until recently, was about form and function. It wasn't perfect, but we could read scripture and understand what we believe. We could read the prayer book and understand what we believe. We could go to church and worship and know what we believe. But we've now come to an area in 2022 where we have a a plurality, pluralism of what we believe. There's two truths. But at least. But at least, yeah, at least two truths. And we need to talk about this, you and I, because you just went to a press conference and a couple of people answered some questions, and Justin Welby seemed to be unaware that there were people, bishops from the Global South, who were talking about walking apart, walking away, not being on the same path as Justin. So mm-hmm. let, just bring me into the press conference and, and what was talked about. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yesterday, the Global South Fellowship of Anglicans had a press conference mm-hmm. and they presented a communique that has been um, agreed. They had a meeting on whatever night it would have been, Thursday night. A lot mm-hmm. of the Global South bishops got together. They um, had been able to read the communique. They'd been able to think about it. They'd been able to comment on it. And then they they said, yes, this is what we want to say. And in it, they talked about the fact that um, they had come to Lambeth the Lambeth Conference. Uh, they were aware of their brothers um, who hadn't come to, to Lambeth, uh, but they, you know, accepted that for their conscience they couldn't come. And they they set forth a, an amazing vision for an Anglican communion, which um, is under the authority of Scripture. Mm-hmm. And they said that until we get re- reclaim the authority of Scripture, uh, the discipline of the church, we cannot walk together. Um, with uh, with those who um, deride Lambeth 110, who who turn the scriptures on their head. Um, that's a slight paraphrase, but it's really worth reading. Well, for people totally who recommend who, downloading it from the site website. For people who believe that there's more than one truth, uh, 
when it comes to marriage and, and sexuality and genders, yeah, we may have to come to a point where we walk apart. Now, you may have heard this before. If you've been following Anglicanism since 2004, I want to turn you all the way back to the Windsor Report. This is a document made up by uh, many people, bishops, primates, uh, clergy and laity uh, gathered from around the world, assembled by Rowan Williams, who are going to put together a report on what is dividing the church and specifically uh, a follow-up to Gene Robinson and, and starting to bless and have same-sex marriages. I think it's the, the last or second to last paragraph, 149 or 150, that says at some point in this battle, we're going to stop talking and we're going to have to choose to walk apart. I'm paraphrasing. That's not what it says exactly. Um, but I think we're here. Yeah, and I think we thought that we'd probably reach that uh, human identity um, call was to be discussed. And um, wonderfully, the Archbishop of Canterbury managed to uh, speak, write a letter to the bishops, if you remember, speak to the bishops, and then something was okay. Um, as one Canadian bishop put it today, he spoke, uh, he explained um, how we could... Um, uh, understand one another better we could listen to one another that he wasn't going to discipline anyone there was no chance of anyone being thrown out of the room and that made everyone just that was just the most wonderful moment uh, I think that's to, again to paraphrase her um, and she said you know it was it was a work of God and then she said and and the Archbishop of Canterbury is uh, it was it was a it was a lesson in change management we then moved <laughs> To a bishop from South Sudan who was asked, you know, how did you feel about coming to the conference? And he said, well, I'm from the Global South. You know what I believe. I, too, was worried about coming to the conference. And, and Tuesday was an extraordinary uh, afternoon. Um, the archbishop uh, gave something to one side and something to the other side. And then at the end, we didn't know whether to be happy or to be sad. And we've gone away and we've talked about it and we're confused. And so we're left in a position where everyone is confused, I think. And in fact, the Archbishop of Canterbury said that the other day. He said he confuses himself sometimes. Um, so the question is, is that confusion a work of the spirit, which some would want to say? Um, or is it just confusion? Well, the Global South uh, Anglicans, Fellowship Anglicans, have put forward, as I say, this mm. extraordinary communique, um, which is just sets forth this vision and in it they say we aren't walking together it's a, um you mentioned in the pre-show we actually talked before we record uh that uh um phil ashy asked a question at the press conference and it didn't go so well yeah so phil ashy from the american anglican council he asked a question he asked you know to because the, the phrase was still being used that we we're all walking together and we were celebrating that asked the Archbishop of Canterbury whether or not uh, he accepted that the Global South Fellowship of Anglicans had said that they were not um, walking together. And um, if you'd like, I can, I can read his answer for you because I think it's worth hearing in full um, as I put it up. He wasn't particularly... So Phil Ashey of the Anglican American Council asked the Archbishop, whether or not he accepted that the primates of the Global South had said that, that they were not walking together with those who'd gone against Lambeth 110. His answer was interesting. He said, yes, of course, if they said it, of course I accept they said it. I mean, I can't deny they've said what they've said. But a number of primates in the Global South have also said, actually, that's not the case. We don't agree with that. So yes, um, I don't. I have to confess to not reading with remorseless interest every press release that is put out by every group connected to the Anglican Communion, because that would be quite a lengthy undertaking. I'd probably never get anything else done. But I look at that one, and uh, yes, it is what it says. But I've also talked to a number of other primates who say, well, yes, but we are we are really walking together. But there it is. Walking together is a phrase that has to be interpreted. He got a bit scary at the end. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we've we've been in press conferences uh, with Archbishop Justin Bardi, with Archbishop James Wong, um, with Archbishop Tito Savales, and all of them have said we aren't walking together. 
and it seems to be something that I, I don't know what it is either he can't hear it because it would be too traumatic to accept um or he won't hear it i don't know which is worse yeah it's i you know i asked george this i said george is this the lambeth that um justin Welby wanted and his answer was yes maybe maybe not no it wasn't of course no it's not the uh, Lambeth that Justin Welby wanted. It's kind of the Lambeth Justin Welby deserved. You, you, you're trying to force together uh, people who have a completely different belief s system. One is orthodox and based on uh, scripture, reason, tradition, um, science, <laughs> anthropology, uh, psychology, sociology, you know, uh, everything supports the view of the orthodox bishops and then there's those who want to re-rationalize uh scripture reason tradition and what has held the church together for so long for the sake of being accepted by culture yeah and I, it's it's it, it's it's that's becoming that is becoming very clear that there are just these two different groups of people walking around and i think it's the atmosphere is fine because everybody can be polite to each other mm -hmm. and even find things that they you know enjoy about each other uh, but the question is is that what a communion is about what that is that what it means to be in communion with right. as, a, as a fellowship as christians um, or is that what it means to go to a, a wedding and have a nice time and chat to people? Um, and I think one of the bishops spoke about the fact that we can sit down and we can, we can. All right, yeah. so we uh, have we have Wi-Fi there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say there's one last thing. Uh, one last thing that might be worth us thinking about. It was a it was a throwaway comment at the press of, press conference today. Okay. Which was which might explain some of the reason why Welby feels that this has been a successful conference and other people don't. Um, because despite the fact that we've been told all the way through the conference that the Lambeth conference cannot make decisions that are binding in any way, always been the case. Mm -hmm. We've also been told today that the, the Lambeth conference has made um, important no substantial changes to its ecclesiology at this conference how you can't um, <laughs> and this is this just seems to be an extraordinary statement and we i i had my hand up at the end of the the press conference desperate to ask that question sure. but yeah. funny enough i didn't get uh, an opportunity to ask it wow. perhaps it's because they knew i'd be coming on here later on <laughs> oh no <laughs> They don't like me on here. They're certainly not going to like you on here. All right, so Susie, I I want to thank you for all your time this week, for you know making arrangements to to free up your schedule, to to make sure the internet works well, which it didn't today. We had uh, several stops, but you've been very generous in this. People want to know more about your ministry and Anglican Futures. Where should they go? We to anglicanfutures.org is mm. our website. We've got a blog there. Um, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, come and find us. We'd love to hear more. And you. we'll probably have to do this again in 10 years. Now, this, this might be the last Lambeth, but if it's not the last Lambeth, please, you're welcome and invited on in 10 years to, to bring us up to date on what's happening in Kent, England at Lambeth 2032. 2032. But we've got the, the Lambeth Congress before then. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. See you in Kigali. Kigali. I love that. 